Lake has always had a bit of darkness surrounding him. We see it more in some forms than others, but it's definitely always present. Although versions of Link, like Twilight Princess Link or the Hero's Shade, fit the bill pretty well as a Link that has a bit of an edge, there is one form of Link that definitely has more of an edge than the others, and is a huge fan favorite because of it. Welcome to another episode of Hyrule History, and in this episode, we'll be talking about the all-powerful and much-beloved Fierce Deity Link. Out of everything we've covered on Hyrule history so far, Fierce Deity Link has the most narrow appearance in the Legend of Zelda timeline, only appearing in the Child timeline during Majora's Mask, and even within the game itself for a very small part. When the Hero of Time successfully defeats Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time, Zelda sends him back through time to relive the youth that was taken from him during the time skip. Once a child again, Link begins searching for his former fairy Navi in the Lost Woods. There he's assaulted and robbed by the Skull Kid who's being corrupted by the evil mask known as Majora. Link follows the Skull Kid into the parallel dimension of Termina and learns of the three-day collision course the moon is on thanks to the evil powers of Majora and the Skull Kid. Link endeavors to save Termina by sealing the four giants and defeating Majora. Along the way, Link acquires a great number of masks, which grant him various powers. Some let him perform the mundane, such as causing animals to follow him, while others contain the manifestations of the hopes and regrets of recently deceased individuals that allow Link to transform into these individuals' likeliness. After awakening the giants and collecting dozens of masks, Link ascends to the moon. The inside of the moon itself is bizarre, revealing itself as an endless grassy plain with a single large tree around which four lunar children are playing with a fifth leaning against the tree. Link talks to each of the children, with each one asking for Link to give them one of his masks before sending him to a puzzle room reminiscent of previous dungeons. The child hides as Link seeks them at the end of the dungeon. Once found, they ask him for more masks and then teleport him back to the grassy field. The child is no longer there. Once this is done with all the children who are playing, Link talks to the last child, who's wearing the Mask of Majora. He asks Link if he wants to play. Link agrees, and upon seeing that Link has no more masks left to share, the child tells him that they're going to play good guys against bad guys, and Link is the bad guy. This time Link receives a mask, as the child hands him the Fierce Deity Mask, a mask that looks and feels powerful. Link is then teleported to Majora's chamber, where he's given time to don the mask before approaching Majora and fighting for the future of Termina. The change is sudden and dramatic. Link no longer looks like a child, instead having a frame matching his adult form. He feels far more powerful, with some sort of dark magic flowing through him. In his hands is an entirely different blade, a mighty sword in the shape of a double helix. He feels different because he is different. He's no longer Child Link. He is the Fierce Deity. With this newfound power, Link steps ahead to face Majora and makes quick work of the evil demon. As powerful as Majora is, the Fierce Deity is stronger. Link removes the mask, and the Fierce Deity is gone. The Fierce Deity might have been overwhelmingly powerful, but in the end, he was still only lending his powers to Link, still simply a transformation for Link to become. It's unknown what happened to the Fierce Deity in the long term. We know that Child Link goes on to grow up filled with sorrow and regret, eventually becoming the Hero Shade in Twilight Princess, but we don't know what he did with the mask. Did he get rid of it, or did it disappear after he returned to Hyrule? Does he still have it when he meet him as the Hero Shade? Maybe he chose to permanently wear the Fierce Deity mask, which is why he's so powerful and has so much to teach the Hero of Twilight. Or maybe he discarded it forever. We're likely to never know. Fierce Deity Link is ostensibly similar to Adult Link and to other male Hylians in general. He shares a humanoid frame and still has Hylian ears. Whether this is the Fierce Deity's true form or simply because he's inhabiting Link is a mystery, yet there remains a stark difference between Fierce Deity and other Hylians. Fierce Deity Link is a giant. He isn't just taller than Adult Link, but he even dwarfs Zora Link or the head carpenter in Clock Town. In fact, he's tall enough that he can climb over the wall in the laundry pool. Fierce Deity Link is tall enough that most of the bosses are no longer that intimidating. Interesting also is his coloring of both his hair and clothing. His hair looks like Link in terms of shape, but it's a striking grayish white. His clothes, likewise, are the same type as Link. He too wears leather boots, dons a tunic, wears gauntlets, and keeps his hair in a cap. But the individual items have very different colorings and are often far more militaristic. 
Riding gloves are replaced with armored gauntlets, his light boots are replaced with giant thick boots, and his now blue tunic is trapped behind a metal chest plate. The chest plate itself has two interesting symbols on it, with one being what seems to be a piece of the Triforce, and the other being the Crescent Moon that was originally the Gerudo Crest, but was also found on blocks and switches in Ocarina of Time. These symbols are interesting, and may be symbolism of Fierce Deity Link truly being a combination of the Fierce Deity and Link, as opposed to completely one or the other. The next interesting thing of note is what Fierce Deity Link may be most known for, that being his face, mainly the pure white eyes and the face paint. I believe this face paint to also be symbolism of Link's control over the Fierce Deity, as the face paint itself seems to be representative of the Hylian shield. The center blue crest points downwards with the same angularism as the blue on the shield itself, and the red streaks across his cheek defiantly spread out exactly like the red wings of the loft wing depicted on the shield. This coupled with the triangle on the chest plate means that all the important aspect of the Hylian shield are represented. The last thing of note is that badass sword. Whether you call it the double helix or the fierce deity sword, it easily gives Cloud's buster blade a run for its money for coolest giant sword. The twin colors match the hair and tunic of Fierce Deity Link, and the two unique blades wrap around one another in wildly expressive representations of the chaos and fierceness of its owner. It certainly strikes quite an impressive image. Fierce Deity Link is a bit of an enigma. The Fierce Deity we know comes from the act of Link donning the Fierce Deity Mask, which evidently contains the spirit of whatever the Fierce Deity is, and causes Link to transform into a different form, just like with all his other transformation masks. We're offered a single canon scenario in which the Fierce Deity is allowed to exist, that being Link donning the mask and fighting bosses, including temple bosses. We don't know if the form taken on is the Fierce Deity's genuine form, or if it works kind of like Dragon Ball Fusion, and the result is a mixture between Link and whatever Fierce Deity actually looks like. Anyways, more on that kind of stuff in the theory section. What we do know is that donning the mask transforms Link into the mysterious and powerful warrior known as the Fierce Deity. In this new form, Link gains greater strength and wields the mighty Fierce Deity sword. The sword is comically long and utterly heavy. In fact, even the Fierce Deity is unable to wield it single-handedly, leaving him unable to use shields. It's no matter though, as the blade is wide enough to serve in some measure as a shield for itself. The sword is also capable of firing off powerful magical sword beams towards its enemies in replacement of any ranged weapon. And honestly, that's kind of it for the non-theory section of this video. I know that it isn't very long for such a popular figure in the Legend of Zelda canon, but with only a single minor canon appearance, there just really isn't much to go on. I'd usually use the behavior section to go over any relations that the Fierce Deity would have with other aspects of the Zelda world, but nearly everything I could say would be theory crafting. But I do apologize regardless as I know that part of the appeal of these videos is their encyclopedic nature. But hey, even encyclopedias have short entries once in a while. There is a fairly obvious question on which pretty much every Fierce Deity theory relies on or relates to, and that question is, just who or what is the Fierce Deity, and what is its purpose? Well, even without getting into complete theorycraft, we actually have a bit of information that we can work with. And just like the Keaton, this info comes from the Fierce Deity Link's name, in particular, the Fierce Deity part. To explain what his name means, first we need to look into our hearts and find religion, in this case, Buddhism. Buddhism as a religion has a focus on attaining enlightenment. Enlightenment is the probably poorly chosen word that Westerners have given the concept of having the awakened intellect of a Buddha. An awakened intellect being one that combines infinite knowledge with compassion, sees past things that satisfy the ego, which means no longer suffering. Obviously, I'm compacting the core concept of an entire religion down to a single paragraph, so please, any Buddhists watching, I'm so sorry. Anyways, what does this have to do with the Fierce Deity? Well, Majora's Mask has tons of interesting connections to Buddhism, but that's beside the point. In the religion of Buddhism, there exists a group of divine beings known as the Wrathful Deities, who are tasked with destroying the obstacles in the Path of Enlightenment. These divine beings are inherently good and are usually seen as protector deities, yet they're depicted as what we would traditionally assume to be a bad guy, such as Paul Denlamo stepping on whatever the hell happened here, or Mahakala holding a flaying knife in a cut 
made out of a human skull. Yet despite appearances, wrathful deities are meant to help us with our obstacles to enlightenment, usually in the form of personal vices or faults such as gluttony or anger, that are preventing us from following the path to enlightenment. And they need to look evil because our vices are evil, and the best way to meet something powerful is with another powerful being. The website Buddha Weekly has a great write-up on this, I'll put a link in the description, and I'm going to use their example. If we were to try and convince a large street gang to give up their ways and stop hurting people, who would be the best person to do it? Would it be Nigel Thornberry, who would be chipper and friendly but likely to just get shot, or would it be the Terminator, who would bring the threat and imposition needed to make that sort of threat and demand? The wrathful deities are the Terminator, and the street gang are your inner vices. Can you see the illusion I'm making to the fierce deity yet? If you think I'm stretching, I assure you I'm not, because the wrathful deities have a name that they use more frequently than wrathful deities. They are usually called fierce deities. Even their Wikipedia page primarily refers to them as such. It is fairly obvious to me that the fierce deity link is quite literally a representation of the Buddhist fierce deity spirits. Everything makes total sense. Sure, it is possible to beat your vices without help from the fierce deities, but it's a lot easier with their help, just like fighting Majora with or without the mask. Link trades every mask he owns away to others in an ascetic act very in line with Buddhism. Then he receives help from the fierce deity to help him remove the obstacle to enlightenment, in this case Majora. That is why so much game material refers to Fierce Deity as dark and powerful, and why he's referred to by Majora as the true bad guy. It's because he is dark and powerful, because he has to be, as the best way to defeat a force as wrathful and vengeful as Majora is with the assistance of a spirit equally as wrathful, thus a wrathful or fierce deity. If that isn't enough for you, there are a few more things that make it pretty obvious. Fear CD Link's blue coloring is very close to the shade of blue that is very common across pictures of wrathful deities across history. Also, we're going to come back to the name. Fear CD Link's Japanese name is Kishin Rinku, or importantly, just Kishin. Kishin is made up of two kanji, which mean ogre god, which is why Fear CD Link is sometimes referred to as an oni link. The ogre part of the word is meant to stand in for the idea of a god that is demonic looking but still a god, and as a result, Kishin is a word that the Japanese Buddhists use to describe their own versions of the Buddhist wrathful deities. So with the English and Japanese names both having direct ties to the concept of the Buddhist fierce deities, I think we can say for certain that the fierce deity is a wrathful deity meant to help Link overcome the evil of Majora. The other theory that is interesting is the idea that every Hylian has a Terminian counterpart and that the Fierce Deity is Link's Terminian counterpart. This is a cool theory, but I don't really have much to compound it with as there isn't really much in the way of proof. Fierce Deity Link appears in the Smash Bros series as a sticker as well as a color palette swap for Link. He also appears in Hyrule Warriors as part of Young Link's mask weapon moveset. His focus spirit turns him temporarily into Fierce Deity Link with a moveset similar to the one he has in Majora's Mask. Fierce Deity Link appears as a costume in Triforce Heroes, granting Link double damage and reduced knockback as well as the ability to shoot sword beams. Lastly, he's included most recently in Breath of the Wild, with his costume and sword being dropped with the Majora's Mask Link amiibo. There's also a well-known glitch in Majora's Mask which allows you to wear the mask outside of certain boss rooms. As well, the 3DS remake of Majora's Mask allows the mask to be worn inside certain fishing holes. Fierce Deity Link is a perfect example of a small part of a piece of media that the fans really grab onto and obsess over, and it makes total sense. Fierce Deity Link is awesome. He's mysterious, really fun to play, and a perfect example of how less is more really can be true. And hopefully I've convinced you that he's also the Legend of Zelda version of a Buddhist spirit. Regardless of my success though, let me know what you think about Fierce Deity. How do you feel about the idea that he's Link's Terminian counterpart? Do you think his sword is as cool as I do? Let me know in the comments, and let me know if you have anything you'd like to see featured on Hyrule History. Thanks for watching, and remember, as you adventure through Hyrule, to watch those roads. It's dangerous to go alone.